This time around, I has a sad, and so does old Greeny here. That shallow clunking you hear is the passenger front wheel bearing, which, out of nowhere, the other night decided to fail on me. <laughs> this video was made possible in part by your generous contributions on Patreon. Thank you. That's right, it's finally another Mazda 2 repair video, the ones that get all the views, but I'm going to preface this one by saying that while this is a repair video, I'm not a trained mechanic and my channel isn't a service. This is something that is broken on my car and needs to be replaced. I'm not just doing this for the sake of making a video, so while I appreciate people watching and commenting and participating in the channel, these aren't open invites to ask me to diagnose or make a video showing you how to repair your broken car. I'm just a guy who can turn a wrench, and when something goes wrong on one of my cars and I can fix it myself, I do, and oftentimes I'll make a video about it to help other people with that problem going forward. Again, I appreciate you guys, but I'm not a mechanic service. So the story goes that about a year ago, my partner went two wheels off the edge of the road and dropped her right front into a foot-deep pothole, obliterating the right front wheel. This wheel, in fact and sending that wheel bearing down the path to an untimely demise. Enough talking, let's get to work. Look, I'm even wearing gloves for all the people who get mad when my hands get dirty. So everything's gonna have to come off to get to this job. Caliper, rotor, tie rod end, ball joint, our knuckle bolts, and then all the various other little things in there. I've got a friend lined up with a shop press who's gonna help me get the new bearing on the new hub. I'm just gonna have all new stuff in there and call it good. I'm gonna pull the knuckle off and just take it over to his place. Remove, replace, easy. I'm gonna start by taking off the brakes. I'm gonna just pull the whole caliper and bracket off since it needs to come off the knuckle anyway. I'm gonna try and keep the rotor and the caliper all together. So the caliper bracket is two 17 millimeter bolts on the back, a 12 millimeter bolt to take the brake line off of the strut body, and then it'll all be free. In fact, you know what? I don't care if my hands get dirty and I don't care if you don't like it. It's probably not gonna go back on that way, but that said, we don't want the caliper and all this weight and the rotor hanging, putting stress on this brake line, so I've got that old bent wheel just holding it up and out of the way. Onto the tie rod end next, and as you can see, we've got a cotter pin nut here. The cotter pin you can remove by hand, and the nut is a 17 mil. If you're cheap like me and not a professional and don't have a bunch of professional mechanic tools, rubber mallet about a few dozen times, and then a few good taps with a real hammer. I ran the nut all the way to the end of the threads so I don't destroy the threads of the tie rod end, and then down she goes. From here, I'm gonna undo the bolt that secures the ball joint, which is a 14 mil. There's a 14 millimeter nut on the other side. Remember to nearly completely round off both heads. That ball joint is really stuck in there. I don't wanna have to try and use a tool that'll destroy the ball joint boot. I'm just gonna PB blaster it overnight and regroup tomorrow. Okay, so after doing a little bit of research, AKA asking for help, it turns out that that bolt holding the ball joint into the knuckle needs to come all the way out. It's not just enough for it to be loose. See, I don't know at all, but luckily I've got a good community of two friends to help me out. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Out she comes. And if you look close, you can see right here on the ball joint, there's a groove that this hardware rests in like so. That's why the bolt has to come out, because if it doesn't, that's never coming out of the hole. Small victories. The stuff finally showed up. I also made not one, but two trips to O'Reilly Auto Parts to play the axle nut socket guessing game. And in the end, the magic number is 32 millimeters. 
To loosen this axle nut, I've got the ball joint just resting on the bottom of the knuckle, kind of in the hole, and I reinserted loosely the tie rod end, just for stability's sake. Breaker bar, big socket, jack handle, it's all you need. Full disclosure, if that looked a little too easy, it's because it was, because that was the second time. In my frustration, I came home and just went and threw all my weight on it, and she came undone. But, you know, for the sake of the video, people like to see things happen. They don't just like to take my word for it, so here we are. Obviously, if you've got air tools or maybe a really strong electric impact, this would be a little bit easier, but sometimes just throwing your weight around is enough. Yes. Yes. Come on, I said yes. There we go. Also, when you're going to loosen that nut, you're gonna want the other side of the car on the ground so that you're not just spinning your wheels freely. So from there, we've got our wheel speed sensor down here. That's a 10 mil. There we go. Then we've got the big old knuckle hardware up here, nuts and bolts, both 17 mil. Bitch. <laughs> Glad I was recording that foolishness. Honestly, folks, the Harbor Freight one pound rubber mallet is the hero of this story. Unparalleled success. That's how you take all that mess apart. Now all that's left is to compile all the new parts and put it all back together. But that's gonna have to wait, cause day two is donezo. This next step is where reality sets in and probably where I'll get some thumbs down on this video. My friend who is gonna help me, our schedules aren't lining up. That's okay. My work, they're asking me to do some overtime. Also okay. I need this car done now. I don't have time to wait around till it's convenient. So I'm gonna take these parts to a shop. I'm going to pay them $45 and they're going to put it all together for me so that I can continue the reassembly process for you guys. And in all honesty, most people that are gonna be trying to do this job themselves also don't have a shop press, so at some point you're gonna have to make some concessions. If nothing else, this video shows any DIYer how to get to this point and I'm gonna go ahead and say that $45 for the convenience of it being right and just getting done in general, I'm happy to pay that and I'm sure most people who were DIYing this project probably will too. And there she is, good as new as if by magic on what I'm hoping is the final day of this farce. Reassembly at this point should be really simple, just the reverse of everything we've already done. I'm also going to add some anti-seize to the ball joint and the tie rod end, just in case something goes wrong and I have to pull this all back apart. Okay, so before trying to reinstall the brakes all assembled like that, and who knows how that's gonna go, I'm gonna cover the torque specs of everything I've reassembled so far just because all that'll be in the way and it'll be easier to do it now. So, the ball joint to the knuckle up under here, that little pinch bolt that's holding it all together, that's 43 foot-pounds. The strut to the knuckle, that's 68. Your sway bar end link is 44 foot-pounds. Your axle nut, is 202 foot-pounds, and the tie rod end to the knuckle is 43 foot-pounds plus the cotter pin. Can't forget the brake line. Voila! It's all back together! Holy crap! With the car fully assembled and back on the ground, a beautiful sight, all that's left is an alignment, and yes, you're going to need one after this job. Whether or not you do it or a shop does it, doesn't matter. If you undo suspension and steering components, you're going to need an alignment. I, of course, do my own string alignments right here in the garage with great success, so that's one less thing I'm going to have to worry about cost-wise. That's another DIY project that I want to show people, but that's going to have to wait for another video. This one's already long enough as it is, and I still need to take this thing around the block just to make sure everything's on the up and up before I do an alignment anyway. I didn't get to show you every little facet of this 
things just didn't work out. I wanted to show you pressing the wheel bearing on and all that nonsense, but in reality, this is the situation that probably 99% of DIYers who tackle this project will encounter. You're gonna have to pay somebody to press all that stuff together, so in the end, I think this is an accurate representation of this project for the average wrench in their home garage. The effectiveness of this video, of course, is subject to public opinion, and YouTube is a fickle place, but I think I did a pretty good job explaining for the everyman how you can do this job, and given the circumstances, I think I covered everything pretty well. And with all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I really do hope it helps someone out. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one. That's never coming out of the hole. Protecting that nut. Protecting that nut. Protecting that nut. Didn't I say this would happen?